So you want to utilize precision technology on your farm? To take advantage of John Deere's suite of advanced guidance and machine automation products, you must first create a boundary around your field, pinpointing where the physical work will take place. In this two-part video series, I will walk you step-by-step -step through how to create a driven boundary utilizing a Gator, G5 display, and a Starfire 7000 receiver to kickstart your precision technology journey with some pro tips along the way. My advice to you, get comfortable with this content because boundaries are here to stay. An exterior boundary is the foundation for success and precise machine control throughout the crop year from the first tillage to the last harvest pass. The field's boundary tells the display the size, shape, and location of the field. The headland area tells the display where end of row turns should happen. These two types of boundaries are used as the reference points that enable John Deere's current guidance and automation products like AutoPath, Section Control, and AutoTrack Turn Automation. Full disclosure, a higher quality boundary will be required for the use of fully autonomous vehicles in the future. But don't let that stop you from experiencing the power of field boundaries. A driven recorded boundary provides precise machine automation and customer recognized value now. Boundaries also enable important customer insights, like estimated time remaining in the field, that allows a farm manager to make operational decisions in real time to gain efficiency and productivity. There are five key hardware and software components that we both require and recommend to get started. First, a Gator or a John Deere tractor is recommended to drive a boundary. However, you can use your John Deere combine as well. You will also need a G5 or Gen 4 display with core automation software capabilities. A Starfire receiver with SF3 or higher correction signal. Note that the GPS accuracy must be at least 90% to begin recording a driven boundary. Pro tip number one, we recommend recording your boundary with SFRTK correction signal for long-term repeatability. Pro tip number two, use the same correction signal when creating and using the boundary. Do not mix and match correction signals. Continuing down the list, you will also need an Operation Center account. And finally, a JD Link connection with an R or M modem is highly recommended, but not required. A connected machine will allow data to be transferred to the Operation Center automatically over the air versus manually transferring with a USB drive, which we will cover later in this video. Once the machine you choose to record your boundary with is equipped with the appropriate hardware and software, we recommend adding the location module to your guidance default run page so you can use the map preview and easily access the pause and resume functions as you record your boundary. Next, navigate the display menu, select applications, then fields and boundaries. Within this screen, choose an existing or create a client farm and field in accordance with the new boundary that is being recorded. Next, hit the Create Boundaries yellow plus button. The pop-up will allow you to choose between creating your boundary based on an existing coverage map or by driving the perimeter of the field. Today, we will be demonstrating how to create a driven boundary, which is the most accurate way to control a boundary shape and can be recorded as you're performing actual field work. Before recording a boundary, completing a proper terrain compensation module, otherwise known as TCM calibration, is critical to successful performance. A boundary recorded with an uncalibrated TCM can cause poor performance when using AutoTrack, ATIG, ATTA, and AutoPath, and will require the boundary to be re-recorded. Do not skip this critical step anytime you install a Starfire receiver on a machine. See the video linked in the description below for more information on how to complete this step. Once you select the driven boundary option, rename the boundary you are about to create. Pro tip number three. Detailed naming for each client, farm, field, and boundary is critical to your success. Name the field boundary with relevant information to identify how and when it was created. Consider including the date the boundary was recorded, the boundary creation type from coverage or driven, and the Starfire receiver correction signal used. With this, the client farm field names must be accurate. Orgs with correctly named and well-organized CFF and boundaries will see the full value of the tools at hand. Next, select the GPS offset point method and input the boundary offset based on where the center of the receiver is located on your machine to the outermost point of the machine where you would like your boundary to lie. If this input is incorrect, the boundary will not be where you anticipated throughout the entire crop year. Carefully take your GPS offset measurements, if necessary, and input them into the display. In this demonstration, we will input a 2.5 foot offset. 
which again represents the distance from the center of the Starfire receiver to the outside of the tire where we want the exterior boundary to be recorded. It is important to understand that if you run an implement that is wider than its track spacing, that extra iron needs to be accounted for in the GPS offset to ensure the implement stays within the field boundary throughout the entire operation. This is accomplished by simply calculating the distance from outermost row to the end of the implement minus half of row spacing and adding that number to the offset. Once you have input your offset, click the green start recording button and you're ready to drive around the perimeter of your field. Pro tip number four, X out of the recording and applications window to return to the guidance run page that you have duplicated in a previous step. This will give you visibility to what is happening in real time and again, makes your pause and resume functions readily available as you record. Pro tip number five, if you choose to record a boundary with a combine, ensure that you select the GPS offset point method and input half of your combine's header width in the boundary offset field before you start recording your boundary for the best results. When recording a boundary, we recommend that you drive between five to 10 miles an hour for the best accuracy. You can choose to manually steer throughout the entire process or use auto track to reduce small variations that you may see if you choose to manually drive. You will notice that as you start driving away from your starting point, the system creates a continuous line from that starting point to your current location and eventually to your end point when you are done recording. Pro tip number six, if there is a side of the field that you would like to snap a straight line across, you can do so by pausing the recording, driving to the desired location on the other end of the field, and hitting the resume button once you have reached your desired location. If you choose to create your boundary this way, ensure there are no obstacles in the way that could damage your vehicle, like a downed tree, or ensure you remove the obstacles before utilizing the field boundary for an operation. Pro tip number seven, if you want the corners of your boundary to be square versus rounded, you will use the same pause and resume method as mentioned before. Hitting the pause button will freeze your line while you reposition your machine to realign with the next side of the field. When you are reoriented, press resume and continue driving the perimeter of the field. You have two options when it comes to completing the boundary. When you have one side of the field remaining and you are aligned with the starting point at the opposite end of the field, you can either choose to save the line as is and it will snap the start and end point together, or you can physically drive back to the starting point for even greater accuracy. Press the save button when you are happy with your boundary to stop the recording. To conclude this process, the boundary data needs to be exported to the operations center, so it can be included in a setup file or work plan to utilize in crop production steps throughout the year. You will do this in one of two ways. First, if you have a connected machine with data sync turned on, the display will automatically synchronize the data with the operations center. You can ensure data sync was functioning by clicking the satellite icon on the green bar across the top of your run page and confirming the data sync indicator light is green. From there, log into your account and navigate to the LAN tab to find your newly created boundary. Second, if you have a machine that is not connected, you will complete the following steps to manually export this data onto a USB and into the operation center. Plug a USB drive into the side of the display. Choose Export Data. Select Custom Export. Choose the appropriate client, farm, and field and press Next. Click on the yellow pencil in the Setup Data tab and select the boundary you have just created. From there, select Current Systems. Finally, export the data onto the USB drive. When the boundary data has been successfully transferred from the display to the USB drive, you will use the USB to import your data into the Operations Center via desktop computer. Again, this data will be stored within the LAND tab. For more detailed information on how to manually import data into the Operations Center, check out the video in the description. Now that you know how to create a driven boundary to enable John Deere's advanced guidance and machine automation solutions, we encourage you to get started recording your own field boundaries. Again, boundary creation is the most crucial step when preparing for precision technology on your farm. It is imperative that you get this foundational step right to maximize automation accuracy and productivity and to unlock the full value of the advanced technology suite within your operation, like the ability to make operational decisions in real time to increase productivity or a nearly hands-free experience for your operators, leaving them more refreshed at the end of the day while performing at elevated levels.